Trivi, it's great to meet you. My name's Aaron. I'm a doctor by background and I now support in healthcare transformation in Bupa across our global footprint. Amazing. I've heard a lot about you and about your interest in futuristic healthcare. It'd be great to get an introduction to you and from your perspective, what you think is the parallels between sustainable healthcare and digital innovation. Yeah, sure. How much time have we got? Go <laughs> so I'm what they call an innovation forecaster. A lot of people use the word futurist. And really, it's a lot about finding those patterns and those shifts and those signals in not just what's going to happen in the future, but looking very closely, I'm quite a geek actually, at what's happened thus far, particularly in healthcare, seeing which particular innovations have actually seen proper uptake from clinicians like yourself and actually the end users, meaning the patients, and then of course the hospitals. And I think that there's a fascinating parallel between what we see as advancements in sustainable healthcare and the pace of digital innovation. And I actually think you can't have one without the other now. So tools like AI, which you know everyone thinks of it as this mythical, strange tool that's going to upend all our jobs. And yet, it's just lines of code. It's just a principle of IFTTT, which is if this, then that. And you're just telling the software that, and we've been using it for decades, and it just gets a bad rap now. However, what AI and data science can do in a very, very healthy way is help us see in our healthcare systems how we can find those sustainable efficiencies, right from tools that find patterns to tell us where we can actually find and cut down on wastage, um, how we can even use things like blockchain, which is immutable and distributed, to actually verify how authentic medicine is and the safety of medication and the provenance and the quality of it. But also, I think, the actual on-ground impact on those of us that need the healthcare the most, the actual patients, then indirectly has a great operational efficiency in terms of the organization and the healthcare ecosystem. So by helping the patient with digital innovations like AI and data, which can allow people and clinicians to diagnose illnesses sooner, drug testing and delivery is you know, much more rapid using these tools because let's face it, they can move at breakneck speed, but we'll still need people. So I do think it should augment our intelligence rather than replacing it and work hand in hand. Got it, got it. I mean, so you mentioned AI there and is, you know, that's one of several things that we've heard of in this space. Is that your, the one that you're most excited about or is there anything else that you think is, especially, I mean, in parallel to the sustainability agenda? Yeah, and the interesting thing as well, Aaron, is with AI, it's actually almost this interesting marriage between AI and data because AI is nothing without the actual information or knowledge transfer on which it's based. That is just the mechanism looking at the four corners of the internet and pulling out what we need to know and applying it. But actually data science tools have that ability to see those gaps, those shifts, those patterns in thousands and thousands of pages of data that we can't hope to see ourselves. But where AI really kicks in, I think, and I've been studying this for about seven years, is adaptive AI or emotive AI. Could a piece of software actually decode what the user needs and preempt that? Mm -hmm. So it's being used in precision medicine, it's being used in everyday delivery of interventions for people suffering with chronic disease. And all these apps, these tools, these websites, these digital advances are actually benefiting not just the person but the planet because of cutting time, cutting energy burden, and actually making the planet healthier as well as the patient. Yeah. I mean, you touched on several things there. I mean, one thing that I see is a common thread is improving the efficiency of the journey, whether that's for the patient or whether that's actually for the system itself, right? And I think that is a real synergistic outcome for the sustainability of our Absolutely. planet as well. Exactly. What is What makes it such a personal passion for you? I'm really interested to find out how, how you got into it. What, why is it such a Import, yeah. Why is it of so much importance? So, Aaron, I actually started my career roots in journalism, reporting heavily on that intersection between where business and organizations meet. I would say that magic staying power of technology because actually what digital innovations often do which we feel like we can't see it because it's an invisible connector is act as that change driver to take a particular task activity anything we're doing whether it's an organization or a person but elevating it and either making it bigger better faster stronger or actually my favorite which is making it more meaningful mm -hmm. so i found that i was doing this process of curating and distilling the best innovations across sectors from healthcare to manufacturing to engineering to you know 
regular business and finance organizations. And so I formed my own forecasting lab seven years ago. And that's where that passion came in, where I'm living, eating, breathing it. I'm up at two in the morning, writing on a post-it. That's, that's actually me. And that's where that personal passion comes from, particularly with healthcare innovation, because who doesn't want to live better for longer? Who isn't thinking about their legacy or longevity or wanting to keep our families safe and healthier for as long as we can. Yeah, no, I love that. I mean, you've, you mentioned that you're living and breathing and that's clear from what you're talking about. And you have such a breadth of experience in different parts of the industry and different industries even. And I guess that makes me ask the question, some, sometimes, I mean, you will have seen this, uh, the climate crisis can be a little bit overwhelming, right? What is your, from drawing from your experience, what is your one reason to be hopeful for us going forward as society? There's actually a number of reasons to be more hopeful than the news media might let on. You know, you see screaming headlines warning us about the decimation of resources, of jobs. Now, the real thing, of course, is that we have got to think about more renewable energy and cut our reliance on fossil fuels. That is a hard fact. We want to move to net zero. We want to reduce our environmental footprint. But I think the reason to be hopeful is that there hasn't been a better time in the midst of this fourth industrial revolution that we find ourselves in to tap into these digital innovations, make them work in our favor, and make sure it's also a human-led digital future and not the other way around. And I love this topic because I've worked very closely with different startup incubators to look at that, I would call it the sweet spot between the resources, the experience, the know-how, the connections of an established large company, quite like Bupa, who absolutely have that reputation and trust, which is harder for a fledgling startup to suddenly get into the market and attract that right away. But what I think startups have that organizations, large organizations could take a leaf out of that book is that nimble agility and also less of that fear for them to upend a business model. They're sometimes having to adapt it and make it up as they go along, which actually works really well. Even to put out a minimum viable proposition, there's less fear, less bureaucracy holding startups back. But if you combine I think that particular adaptability and the startup mindset, or I like to call it the inventor mindset, where they're rolling their sleeves up quite literally yeah. and handling everything from the front line. In the same way, when I set up my lab, I was CFO, CTO, yeah. head of business development, all of it. That actually means that you understand the pain points of your target audience in a way that is quite unmatched. And I think pairing that passion and ingenuity together with the innovation and the know-how of a large organization is just magic. Yeah. So uh, what I'm hearing is, is that providing the startup or startup provides the organization or the larger organization with that permission to be brave if you will, I love that, yeah. with the muscle that a large corporate can provide to exactly. actually exercise on some of that. I've learned so much from talking to you oh, today, Shay. Thank you so much for being with us and, and love to speak to you again soon. Absolutely.